And all this week, we have had the honor of bringing you the stories of those most deeply affected by the Columbine tragedy. And now, here 20 years later, they all have one thing in common. They want you to know there is light after dark. Tonight, here's Sean Graves. Every time I come into the library, I get just a dropping in the stomach feeling coming through those doors. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. Being here on the campus of Columbine High School is not easy for Sean Graves, emotionally or physically. It's been rocky. It, I'm not going to say it's been a smooth road. It's definitely a dirt road. It's not paved yet. There's, there's days that I wake up and my, my ankle hurts or um, my knee's killing me, my back hurts. Um, I, I wake up every day in pain. Sitting here next to his wife, Kara, he recounts that day in 1999, then 15 years old, hearing gunshots. We knew what we were hearing. We just chose to ignore that because we were naive. We were, well, we were stupid. Sean was shot six times. One of the bullets paralyzed him, and doctors didn't think he would walk again. I need to uh, do more physical therapy before I'll know if I'll walk. That was in the summer of 1999. After months of rehab at Craig Hospital, he proved them all wrong. And when looking back on how he was injured, the way he describes it may surprise you. I allowed myself to get shot, uh, <clears throat> well, shot in the, the neck or the shoulder, and then I was shot three times immediately across my abdomen. It's interesting you, you use the words, I allowed myself to be shot. Why do you say that? I'm a father now. Well, we, we have a, a beautiful baby girl. Uh, she's three years old. And now that I'm a parent, I am, I'm not going to lie. There's, there's quite a few sleepless nights because I can't physically protect my daughter 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. We've got to raise our children a little differently, to think a little differently without stripping them of their innocence. We still want to allow them to have a childhood, but we've got to start training them younger to understand how to identify a potential threat and what to do with that once they have that information. So when I say that I allowed myself to be shot, I'm looking at it because I was naive. We chose to ignore the warning signs and we kept approaching them anyways, where I could have ran away and we wouldn't be here today. He tries not to focus on the negative and instead look at what the world has learned from a tragedy and share that there is light after dark. There's been days that I've, I've sat there and just questioned, why me? Um, truthfully, it was me because I could take it. And tomorrow there will be a community vigil at 730 to honor and remember those impacted by the events nearly 20 years ago. That's at Clement Park at the Columbine Memorial. And then on Saturday, the main service will be from 3 to 5 p.m. in the same location. And Denver 7 will have live coverage both here on air and online.